Hi guys and welcome to the 5th 3 Man Meta Podcast. This week we've got something a bit special as all three of us are in the room together. So I'm Leighton and with me as ever I have Danny and James. Yeah, it's a party in here. <laughs> it's a real party house. I've decided to buy a house and have no internet. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing this. So, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that we got a podcast out every couple of weeks. We're hugging each other around this one little microphone as a sausage fest bromance going on. I feel it's a pretty girthy microphone to be honest it's not very little so we talk about sausages and girth and we've been here less than 30 seconds this is what happens when you don't pre-write an intro <laughs> and just wing it but it's all good so anyway on on this episode we're going to talk about the world's results and uh, we're going to talk about a few deck ideas and um games that we've been playing and testing we also had a request to talk about a deck so Worlds finished last weekend. There was lots of competition, lots of swag to be won. Obviously, if you heard us last time, we were being very OTT and trying to claim that swag for ourselves. Uh, I know that Danny was really hoping to get himself the page of Mon Mothmas. Yeah. He was really looking forward to that. <laughs> you think many <laughs> Bothans so died? Many Mon Mothmas died to make that poster. And so, yeah, so we're going to talk about he won the tournament. And the person who won the tournament was me because <laughs> I play Vader Raider and, not like a lot of you probably play Vader Raider as well. But it was one of my predictions, I think, of what the, the deck that was going to that was going to take it. Interesting that the, the Danny Sleeper deck, the Bala Phasma Trooper made it into the final as well. I mean, that deck has obviously got a lot more airtime. Is that going to yeah, be the, the expression um, in recent months? Yeah, it's more consistent. It's come kind of in the foreground as probably the most consistent Awakenings deck, I would say. But I probably it, it is a hard matchup. I know I've played late in a few times against Beta Raider. And... Yeah, but I do think the time that I did beat you was super close and quite, I felt like that was my hardest match in that tournament. And, I mean, not to disrespect the other people I played against, but just that was definitely my toughest match of my field. And the other ones, I, I'm, I've said this before, with this deck I feel powerful. Um, normally when my opponent rolls lots of damage, I'm not too bothered because you've got such a massive health pool. And normally by the time Vader dies, you've softened them up enough for the Tuscan to, to, to take the victory. But I remember in that match, I, I'm, in that match, I definitely, it's very, it's very scary. What do you think, James? In the three-man meta, I am the guy that doesn't play those two decks. And I've sort of, I've seen those decks evolve from you guys and I've seen how strong they are in like, uh, you know, various different competitive play and just when we play casually, they are super consistent and super strong for their own, you know, in their own way. So seeing the world's final being those two decks, I was like, wow, this is, this is just my life. Like you know, watching other people play these two decks and yeah, I'm not, I'm not that surprised. I had my money on Han Ray taking it just because they released that mat and I was like, I don't know, for some reason that swayed me, which makes no sense. Well, but... it's almost like FOG thought, yeah, this is yeah. the guy This is the yeah. guy that's going to win the game. I, mean, yeah. I mean, there's going to be so much more Ray stuff coming out with the new film, mm. so let's just stick Han's face on the mat because he's definitely going to win the tournament. <laughs> Overall, I'd say those two decks and Han Ray uh, the, are the three, probably the three best decks of Awakenings mm. now that we're sort of fully over Awakenings. I think they're like the three highlights, aren't they, really? Wasn't there some madman playing a four-character suite in the top 16, wasn't there? Because we, we tried to yeah. find the um, infographics, but I think I distinct, distinctly remember when it was happening, seeing it for Facebook, some madman had made it through. Yeah, I think two uh, Rainbow Decks made it through. Which is pretty, it's a pretty good, it's a good, it's a good feat. But the thing is, we have to remember as well with this World Tournament, it was the first tournament and there was only one set available. So there wasn't really going to be that many big surprises as the game develops, there'll be more sets, and the characters that aren't used as much are going to see more players, more tools come out for them. At the moment, I mean, you can laugh at us now, but the ammo belt second chance thing has been confirmed, <laughs> and it's stupid. It's so, so bad good. for the game. It's dumb. I played a game against um, Danny earlier today, and I had to pop off about three ammo belts and three second chances before I finally won, Yeah, <laughs> which is insane. Uh, I, the only reason why I won is because he could no longer do his win condition of milling me because he had no more upgrades that had the discard side on any characters yes. alive. And you had two cards left in hand. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I think, I don't think we were wrong to, you know, overreact to it. I think we're right. I think it should see an FAQ. I stand by that. And it is ridiculous. I think it in 35 minutes, we, we need to time it because we played a mm. few games as well, me and Danny did. And it is a thing. It's just in 35 minutes, can you still effectively mill your opponent out or whatever your win condition is? Can you meet that? Yeah. But at the same time, it should still be FAQ'd out because not because it's making you win the game, 
but because it makes this game so damn slow. And you just sit and you you play it and you you what you knock that upgrade off, you knock that upgrade off, and you just think this isn't Destiny. Like, <laughs> Destiny's meant to be quick. Like I think me and you, uh, me and Layton played a few game a couple well game after afterwards and. It's just, just guns so blazing. Yeah, it's just so quick. We were like, okay, done that, done that. Okay, now we're playing. And that's what Destiny should be about. And I think Ammo Belt and that interaction is just not what Destiny is about. I don't really want to go into it too much because I think enough has been said about it. We, yeah. I, I'm also, we hate it, even though we have joined the light side and we've all made decks with it in because <laughs> if you can't beat them, join them, man. I mean, there's only try a couple out, of cards that actually stop it. But the point I was trying to make was the fact that there's we're now seeing those characters come back in like Padme is being used a lot more because this combo works and it kind of gives her a lot more legs so in future tournaments we're going to see a lot more varied decks uh, so obviously in this tournament we only really had the big the big boys fighting out Vader Raider Han Rey Battle of Asma Trooper surprisingly not much Django around I think no. like the, the buzz of Django I think is well and truly worn off which was very very surprising yeah I think that was like the early awakenings thing, wasn't it, Django? Because with that action sheet, everyone was like, oh my God, this is insane. And I think people learned sort of how to play around and people realised that actually double dice Django, especially for his points, maybe not be worth it because his dice aren't incredible. I mean, he's still going to be a top tier character, I think. You know, we still see him every now and then. But to not see him, in, I mean, to not see him in, to that extent in Worlds was definitely surprising. Yeah. I mean, especially when everyone started paying in double hunker downs, double deflects. Yeah. Like, that's why Django tailed off. But he's still a good character, and all it's going to do is now people are going to, especially with things like Vibro Knife, which is going to put more focus on melee, it's just going to make Django better. Because when you bring Django, people haven't got the range tech in their decks anymore. Yeah, he's split damage, and his base damages aren't very high just one, two, and a one. Um, so that's the problem with Django when he doesn't roll hot. He just die. He just dies too quick. Any ten health, and if he's not killing people before they kill him, he dies. Which is obviously the most ridiculous statement I've ever made because it's so, <laughs> so obvious. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so, I mean, it was quite a surprise not not to see him. Looking at the top four, it's quite cool that uh, I think it's quite cool that Team Covenant Zach made it into the top four. Yeah, he was the only guy repping the heroes and the only hero deck worth playing. Other than maybe Qui Gon Ray, <laughs> um, was the was the Han Ray. I think a lot of people probably thought Han Ray was gonna gonna take the victory, but the deck that won the Vader Raider. Looking at the actual deck list, that's what we're gonna talk about now. We're gonna look at the deck list and kind of question <laughs> some of the decisions. So we're going off at the top. There's two Boundlesses in there. Now I tried Boundless Ambition in a deck. In fact, I one of the tournaments that I won the, the morning of the tournament. I think I watched Tiny Grimes did a video. Tiny's talked about putting Boundless, how this is a great card, how it helps you to cycle through your deck. It's really good helping you find your holocrons, find the bits and pieces. So I tried it, and I didn't play it once in four four games. I had played it in another deck, so I quite I like it with Dooku Grievous. I think Balance Ambition is fantastic in that, because, again, it's the exact same thing. You want to get you fill your hand up. You want to be able to discard cards of your hand for Dooku's ability, and also allows you to find that all-important personal shield, which you need to keep your Grievous alive. So it makes sense in there. And I understand its implication in this deck. Yeah, I, 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 I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so should we just run through the rest of the deck? Yeah, so I guess we'll run through it. So we ran two Boundless Ambitions. One copy of Deflect, which was quite surprising as well. Again, maybe because there isn't much range in, in his meta, so he made that call. Cool. It is a single dice removal, but it's also a bit of damage. That card is fantastic against the, the Han Ray deck. Probably average two damage off each deflect mm. because of the number of three sides there on Han's dice and the, the, the heavy blaster pistol. But it's an interesting. I, it's interesting. Got down to one, but maybe it's actually thinking of that as a bad choice. Uh, initial thought. Actually, think about it further on. I've completely cut it out of a lot of my SOR decks. It can't seem to squeeze it in anymore. It doesn't do enough anymore so maybe that the dropping down to one was a really good call the two electroshock pretty standard the two in rage was really surprising again rage is another card that i really like using with dooku <laughs> uh for some reason i was thinking oh, oh, i nearly went pulku <laughs> you know like <laughs> is there one of the characters Pudu? is it Pudu that he says Poo no it's um is it the doesn't he step in Pudu? Uh, on Sebulba at the end of the Sebulba. race yeah yeah 
Yeah, there uh, you go. That's what I, that's away. what I was thinking of. That's awful. Okay. But that anyway, <laughs> yes, that's an interesting call. You know, obviously, it's great to get an extra resource. There isn't a lot of pay sides in that deck, though. There's only the one pay side on the Tuscan Raider, the three for one. And then normally the big cards like the Mind Probe and the Force Throw those cards you're going to try and holocron out anyway. So I've never yeah. really found to be that tight for money, but obviously he, he made it work. It'd be interesting. I mean, because we haven't seen any of the games. It'd be interesting yeah. to see how many times Enrage was played. The one four strike is absolute madness. Yeah, I mean, I've lost count of the amount of times I, I've now learned, obviously, to remove Vader's dice, even if they're not showing anything dangerous, because I know exactly what that four strike does in that deck. And I found out the hard way, so I'm really surprised. I mean, if I could, I would have the deck concerning... Um, 34 strikes <laughs> that would do me just roll them out just pay two a turn that'd yeah. be great so yeah the one four strikers yeah the, the only thing I can imagine why you would cut it down is because it costs you a resource but then he's running in double rage. rage to fill up his resource gap so I, I, I don't get it I would should probably watch at least the grand finals just to see what you know, if at any point you would have actually missed that four stroke. Yes, yeah, because I, I haven't watched any of the games again because I have no internet. So <laughs> this is very a very speculative um, breakdown of the deck. Two, he doesn't like you. Very standard. Two intimidate. This was another interesting card. I had I like one copy of intimidate, but maybe it helped him very much in those Han Ray matchups. That's a real good meta call, I think, because. The Han Ray's going to be getting a lot of shields. And if he's playing against other red decks, they're going to be making use of dug in. Yeah. And so essentially, it's a zero cost, three damage. So maybe that's one of the reasons why he cut his four strikes down to one, because he sees the Intimidate as a zero cost, three damage card. Yeah. To take cover. So again, it's a crazy pick. Because when I first read this, I thought he was playing two blocks or two or, or dodges. But yeah, take cover. I mean, that does seem a really odd choice of a card. I mean, it does... Technically, make Vader 15 health. Isn't 13 enough already? <laughs> well, no, he's just running rage. Maybe he wants to take cover and then in rage get a the shield. shield off. Oh, that's a good point. So it Maybe. does. They, they, so the take covers do kind of negate the enrages, in a yeah. sense that you could take a damage and then you yeah. can. Uh, you can this card next gives action. you one resource. For yeah. Two yeah. So but, okay, um, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. It'd be interesting to see. What impact to take other than yeah. had in his games? How many times maybe that like he looked on the board and it was like, okay, there's five damage there. I've got five health. I'm playing take cover. Now I have six health. Now yeah. I'm not dead. And I will kill you. So yeah. yeah, that's an interesting one. The two backup muscle is pretty standard. And now we get into the upgrade. So two, two force throw, pretty standard. Two force training was quite standard at the time. Two hunker down, again, an interesting one. Mate. You know, that, again, that's going to be helping get that Han Ray matchup and the general range matchup, the Phasma Valor Trooper and... Any any ranged po ray, yeah, those sort of decks. The one immobilized. Now, a lot of people are starting to switch over to mobilize off for, from force choke. I made that change quite a while ago. Yeah, I was a big big advocate for that. I don't rate force choke at all, and I've always loved immobilizing my Jabba Dukus. So yeah, because well, force choke requires you to roll the special, which there's two sides of it, if I believe. And immobilize is just the dice has to be in the pool, mm. and you just it's a one one use bang. And you don't get the damage off it, but yeah, it's just just having it there. Um, the one lightsaber. I mean, I understand why I can drop that down to one because it's not exactly got the best sides and does cost three. Uh, I'm always just so whenever I see redeploy on a weapon, it just instantly makes me want to play it in that deck. Just because, like I said again, Vader's going to die first. So the great yeah. thing is you can if even if you don't if, even if you're not using it for damage early on. When Vader's about to die and you've got an upgrade on there, you just switch it out for the lightsaber and you've got a free lightsaber on a Tuscan Raider. Yeah. So um, that's why I really like the lightsaber. It's good resource economy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but you know, it's got two it's got three solid diamond sides I mean the special's nothing the special has definitely helped me a lot of times getting through shields, but then he again he's got the intimidate so he hasn't got to worry about shields. Yeah. Two mine probe, very standard. Uh, two Sif Holocron, very standard, and the main surprises in the deck was two copies of On the Hunt. See, I like it. As, <laughs> as a first Mabala Trooper player, I played a lot of On the Hunt, and it's a one cost upgrade which you can then bump into other cheaper upgrades, so it makes your lightsaber a two cost. The special, while also running to intimidate, maybe it's a bit shield overkill. But it's also for the you know for the uh, extra resource you can remove a die as well, so yeah, it's, it's, it's more removal, it's more so. removal. But again, in this deck, when you're playing blue villain, you've got the Sif Holocron. Yeah. Um, you can get the stuff out, but then you are living and dying on that special. 
where this is a way for you to upgrade up. So yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's sort of like Danny said, it's a ramper, isn't it? You sort of use it to ramp up into bigger things. But I mean, maybe I'm a bit being a bit too close-minded because I've done, I don't play these sort of decks. I feel like if I really need a card in my opening hand, I'd rather just have one particular card that I really need. Like mm-hmm. I'd rather just have that double holocron and really, really try and mulligan hard for that mul- holocron as opposed to like cards like this as well. And then sort of thinking, oh, well, then I won't mulligan that because I've got that in my hand, but I need also really need a hologram here. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too close-minded because I don't play games like, like this, this play style. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, for me, it's like... Uh, one of the game I played against, was it against you earlier? I or was it against one of you guys earlier today. It's just I was playing an SOR Beta Raider, but I just stuck the whole hand away because there wasn't either A, a holocron, or B, a fast hand in that hand. And yeah. they're the cards that I want... I want early on. I'll draw into the other ones. I mean, I, you know, it's always great to have four strikes in your hand, but it always feels better to pay the one to get turn it to three to kill a character than it does doing it on turn one where it doesn't. The three damage yeah. doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I feel what this does do is because I'm not a big fan of blue villain because you do live and die by holocron so hard. So this does give you the the other option of okay, I haven't drawn my holocron in the first three turns of the game. It goes you from getting like okay, this is going to be a rough game too. If you've got things like On the Hunt and it then lets you, with the Enrages, it lets you, you know, hard play a Mind Probe fairly easily. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, like I say, it may, must must have been mainly used for, for its ramping, mm. I think. But yeah, so it's a, a very interesting deck list. Um, I've looked at a lot of Raider, Raider lists on um, on SW Destiny DB and seeing what, how people are playing it. And, and I've had, I've tried various different versions myself, but On the Hunt, and take cover are two cards that I have never ever tried. But this guy, I can't remember what was his name. Let's, let's actually get. Let's it's actually uh, talk. Let's actually get our world champion's yes. name, Daniel Weiser or Visor. Will it be a Visor? So, wow, we're so sorry. good. Yeah, sorry, Daniel. So, but uh, you know, you, you you probably don't even listen to us anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, but an interesting, an interesting so take cool. on the list, and obviously massive props for. For going to Worlds and being the first world champion, that's incredible. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, definitely a feat. Maybe we could have another Paul Heaver on our hands, and he can come back next year and Just wow us again. again, and then do it another time after that. Obviously, this Worlds was done on buying your ticket online, and then you just went. So as world champion, does he get an invite back next year or has he got to go back through regionals or... I think they get... I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure they get an invite mm. into the next one. I know a lot of the time with a lot of um, FFG games, a world's winner gets to help design a card as well. Yeah, that was in there. So maybe he can just say, yeah, just... I don't want to design a card, guys. Just FAQ, second chance and time like that. <laughs> and that will be my request. That, that, will, that will be oh, my prize. Thank yeah. you. Well, the thing is, if I win the Worlds, I guess I wouldn't worry about doing that because I've won Worlds. Yeah. So I've beaten it anyway. Yeah, that's, true. <laughs> that's true. I'd just say give me Boba Fett now or Darth Maul. Yeah. I don't care. But instead of Darth Maul's face, just can you now. just use my face? Yeah. <laughs> well, but anyway, on to the next part. We're going to be talking about some more decks that we've been playing. So last time I went into great detail talking about Vader Raider. And I think we've talked about Vader Raider enough on this show yeah. to put it well and truly to bed so Danny and James why don't you boys talk about the decks that you've been playing so I've been playing with my red heroes shock horror as we all know I'm not a hero player yeah. and it's been interesting it's been a fun experience I've been playing with e and Baze Malbus you and bloody love Baze I love him I just <laughs> love him to bits he's a great guy he's a good chap he... does he also like Cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's a big fan of cucumber sandwiches. Yeah, it's, it's been going well. It's I don't think I would take it to the Euros that we're sort of training towards now because it's just not quite there. It's it's a fun deck and I think it is fairly competitive, but I don't think it's as competitive as some of the mill, the villain mill that I'm going to be sort of gearing up as we head into Euros. It has been pretty good against the ranged decks with those hit and run plays with if I get wingman in my opening hand that's like the holocron for that deck if I get that wingman out early and put that on layer or base or whatever and then hit and run them out if they're already out or whatever and then just chain and then it's a trap it into that sort of damage I mean I don't I didn't didn't use it to trap against you but I managed to get what was it in the the opening the opening round I managed to get what seven damage seven damage on my gin and I had two shields on already because I took your battlefield yeah that was pretty crippling the thing about that deck what you could probably do as well is even if you are playing against just second chance in general you probably have enough damage potential if you get the nice and weak so you've got one damage to lethal anyway you've probably got enough to just 
to, to kill them and then split the damage. So, okay, this dice takes off your second chance. Now this dice, kill, these dice kill you. Yeah. So because there's a lot of there's a lot of damage potential there with with layer having two sides of two. Yeah. yeah. And base having as three that costs one, and also having as plus two, two. And, a two. A, and the two, and then you've also got cards like Overkill, which you know overkill people and <laughs> and rocket launcher. But you did say that you found money being quite tough, a lot of pay sides. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of pay sides in that deck if you want to just smash it out and like yeah, get those get those points in. But that's the problem when you get those rocket launchers. You're like, really want to play this rocket launcher, but if I play it, I won't be able to fire any rockets or. Like mm-hmm. if I ever let her have one, and then as soon as I spend that one, I have nothing else to do for the rest of the round in my hand. So you saw how quickly I was claiming it was incredible. It's like three or four actions a guy, and then it's done. Like sometimes it was even. Two I didn't have the battlefield for the entire <laughs> game. So when I, so when my duggins came up, I was like, just gonna get rid of that card. <laughs> I'm not gonna have the battlefield. But I, that, then it meant I could play a lot slower. So I was playing uh, Elite Jin with a Rebel Commando. And um, I play it with C-3PO and Infamous. So it's normally quite quick with Infamous because I can Infamous cards out. But I didn't see, I didn't think I saw any yellow events for the first three rounds. <laughs> so I had, I had wow. so I was like, I got Infamous in the first hand. I was like, yes, this is great. I want Infamous in the first hand. But then didn't see any until I think I played my first Electroshock on round four. Yeah. Which was pretty insane. Yeah. But, but I did manage to get two second chance. No, I got one second chance on Jin. That's right. And I'd drawn the second one. And I had two resources and a weapon on her, a hot out blast. And I thought, sweet. She had one health left. I thought, I'm just going to, my first action, I'm just going to, well, I'm going to roll her out and then see what you've got. If you've not got damage, then I'll resolve my damage. If you have got damage, I'll just switch it about. But no, you just hit and ran me. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, okay, now I've got a dead card in my hand. But don't, this is why I prefer the Rebel Commando because normally in that situation when you're playing Jin and Akbar, when Jin dies, you've got Akbar and you just think, oh man, I've got one damage side, I've got yeah. nine health, it's a tall order. But I think when the Rebel Commando is sitting there, here's only one health more, but that extra damage side, I think really, really matters, the two damage sides, especially yeah. when you're playing Overkill on that. Um, I think I mentioned to you before, um, during the game, I used to put the overkills on Jin because she's got the two two sides, but she's always the first target. So I always put my overkill now on the Rebel Commando. So if he, if my Jin does die, or even if she isn't still alive, there's two solid black damage sides on there. So even if you're only rolling out those two dice, you've got a real high chance of hitting. You know, you can hit just those two dice can do five damage at the best, which is which is insane from two dice. Yeah, yeah, I think. I'm I'm sort of in the same boat. If I see someone's getting hurt, I I really really struggle to put a weapon or an upgrade, you know, and any sort of upgrade on someone that isn't redeploy, because I think they're they're <laughs> they're going to get targeted. No one really switches targets, and I think oh, I don't really want to. Oh, I... So I end up just stacking the other person up because mm. I hate putting things that aren't redeploy on a target that's about to die. It's just not good. It's just not good. That's the thing about Jin. She's pretty solid with her damage size as well. Mm. She's got the just two solid two damage sides so if you can just get one upgrade on there it's, it's pretty good mm-hmm. um, normally I find when I've played that deck before is when I do draw into my actual events uh, I can take the time to put the upgrades on her because I'm going to be using her ability to get free electroshocks or mm-hmm. get playing rebel for free and getting other cards out of the discard part and playing yeah. them again so you can play rebel for free to play your um, field medic for free yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's like a free two yeah. damage yeah. heal um and then you oh, and against you, Danny, when you were playing against the deck, you're going to talk about you rebelled a second chance back. Yes. <laughs> so it's um, so you normally you've got a lot more heal. I only have, at the moment I've only got one copy of Lone Operative in there, and I'm kind of thinking that I might just take it out completely because I'm not playing the mill game in that in my version. I'm playing the damage game. Um, I'll, mm. If I'm showing the two mill and my opponent's got two or three cards in the hand, then I'll go for it because not only does it remove. Um, great cards in the hand it removes re-roll options so the, the having the having the two mill sides though they like I said they're not damage sides they are helpful and because I'm running two C-3PO I can turn that two mill into a two damage side if I need to as well yeah yeah I think that all, all makes perfect sense guys do you know the best thing about Jin though is that my celebration card showed up in the post <laughs> and I have my borderless Jin so that's the best thing about her yeah but you've you not played it <laughs> yeah I played it I played it on Monday night oh okay I oh, lost both there. my games with Jin Commandos because but you I, felt good doing it I felt good it looked really pretty 
But that's because, you, like you said, you weren't playing Infamous in that deck. I wasn't playing Infamous, and I don't have C3PO's yet. And were you so. playing um, Never Tell Me the Odds as well? Nope. See, that's just... That, that, I, was just <laughs> I built a bad deck, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but then I played the deck that I'm going to talk about, which I put a photo up on Facebook on the Monday night, which was uh, Padme Double Hide Gun, which is different to all the other Hero Mill I'm seeing. I've seen a lot of like Padme Double Gin, which... I'm going to have to give that a go because that looks really interesting. And then you've also got Padme, Maz, and then either Ray or Snap Wexley, depending on if you want the blue or the red. Um, but the reason I went for two hired guns is because I play Planned Explosion. Oh. So you get the three damage sides. And it hasn't really come together yet. I think no. I still need to play a bit of tweaking. But I haven't, I don't, all three games I've played of it, I have four games. I haven't drawn any of my con artists or cunnings early. I always seem to draw them around turn three, which is causing me a lot of issues where I can't get them into play quick enough to roll out the dice to show the 10 damage to then kill someone. Yeah, because I did, because I played against Danny using this deck today, and it was the first game we played today, wasn't it? Mm. I was playing um, my SOR Vader Raider against it. And I, when you really laid that character suite in front of me, I did. I was wondering why he was going for the hide guns. I thought maybe it was because they've got two resource. I have got two resource they, sides. They have got two resource yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking maybe it's because they've got the two resource sides that he was going for it and not worrying about the damage. And they also got that one disrupt side. So maybe you know another way of choking your opponent out is starving them of their resources. But I, I never saw the planned explosion. I mean, no. I, I probably should have paid more attention to your discard pile yeah. because you probably pitched them for re-rolls. But yeah. um, <laughs> I haven't played any Destiny uh, physically in about two weeks. So <laughs> I think I was just mainly just excited the fact that I had real cards in my hand for a while. And I think that's where the big surprise of this deck comes from because people don't expect you to play Plan Explosion because everyone sees Plan Explosion and go... No one's going to play that. <laughs> but when you look at it, 10 damage one-shots a lot of characters. Or we'll pit them on one or two health, which you can then just resolve a hide gun damage side the next turn and finish them off. So the, my issue is, as I say, I need to get these upgrades out early so I can get a lot of dice in the pool. Um, someone did post a comment about using the smuggling freighter because that's got a lot of... It's the one cost... Oh, the um, one that if you resolve a dice for, for two, you two, have to put it back, to back on top of your deck. But you never resolve it. You just roll it in for the two side. Mm. It's only cost you one resource. This deck swims in money. I use um, uh, double dealing, which is every time you roll a special, you just gain a buck. So whenever you roll a Padme with Maz's goggles, you you know, they're just specials just flying left, right and centre with this deck, special with Con Artist and Cunning. And well, lone operative. That's one of the reasons why I was fast handing. When I, if I rolled a disrupt, I was fast handing your uh, resources yeah. away. So I was like, I need it to just, stop these. Yeah, these originally, players. when I first built the deck, I had a Millennium Falcon in it because it's got the huge discard side, it's got the big damage side. And I was like, no, it's greedy. I'm not going to have enough money to play it. But I think maybe it actually could be a, a real card. So I need to. Tweak the deck a bit more, I think. Um, Wasn't Padme the first deck you ever played when you played this game? Yeah, I so when I, yeah. Yeah, when I bought my two starters and then a handful of booster packs, I traded viciously for Padme Akbar, <laughs> and I lost every single game I played. <laughs> I thought I was really bad at the game, and then I okay. played the best card in Destiny, which is the credit card, <laughs> bought two boxes, wow. and... Uh, yeah, built for Phasma yeah. Ballad Troop and obviously started winning all my tournaments. Well, I think I think I remember your first game because it's well, not your first game, but mm. I remember our first game because I was well, we were pretty much the two man there at that point when the odd person <laughs> yeah. joining in. Um, I was like, who's this guy? And you were playing Mill, and I was playing Mill, I think, at that point yeah. as well. And I was like, what? What is this? And it was my first Mill versus Mill game, and it was incredibly long yeah <laughs> I remember like, that like because I had no cards as well that deck was really I ran outpost yes yeah, so I remember playing, playing yeah because I think I had a my because my I think I was was I playing Django Trooper Trooper against you yeah, I think and just, like just, a real deck just, just blowing you up really quickly <laughs> yeah I remember thinking look at this putz he doesn't understand how this game works nope <laughs> No, I read the FAQ and I was like, right, so damage done, and then it's cards. So I need to run loads of healing, I need to keep my guys alive. So now they just died. Well, that goes with what we were saying at the start when we were kind of talking about the decks you're seeing at Worlds, that, like I say, now there's these new tools coming out that these characters like Padme are going to be played. And I think even without the Amabelt second chance thing, she could still, play, she could still see play with just second chance because there's a lot more tools 
and that explosion is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, lone operative goes a long way of adding the survivability to these yellow characters, because obviously... If you have got second chance on Padme, a lot of people go, okay, I'll just kill the hired guns. But once you've killed the hired guns and then Lone Operator starts healing you for three every turn, even if, if and when, hopefully, they would do the ammo belt FAQ, then you're still, you know, resolving three health every turn pretty much because it's got the double special side. So. And it also, you know, helps you for your mill game as well because it's got the two the two disrupt side as well. Got the two disrupt. Sorry, I always call disrupt, God, disrupt. It just no, feels no, no. like disrupt is what is what it should yeah, be. You're disrupting yeah. your opponent's hand, but yeah, it's, yeah, discard. But yeah, so it's got the two um, value sides that also go into planned explosion. So ju- just off the bat, if, if Padme rolls really well, you can get, you can get the 10. It'd be very opening hand. If you get the two threes on the hired guns and the double focus off Padme's two dice, you could plant explosions on one turn one. Yeah. It will happen once and I'll take a photo and I'll be very happy. <laughs> yeah. It'll, It'll only happen once. Or something. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that's what I've been playing. I've been doing a lot of testing with um, Qui-Gon Ray as well and that's probably the deck I'll take to Euros. I think it's there, like I was saying before, it's like with this whole high, um, ammo belt second chance mm. thing, I think you're just setting yourself up to lose by playing Mono Hero Blue because Mono Hero Blue has no way of dealing with Ammo Belt Second Chance. You're right. What I would do is you try and gun down Padme as quick as possible. If you don't kill her, just start taking five minutes in action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so That's just anyway. being really dirty and just <laughs> not, like, oh, I'm just thinking really hard. Wow. Just, yeah. I'll, yeah. yeah take, I'll take a warning for slow play if it means that I can be a, a dirty combination. <laughs> Yeah, well, obviously in our game what we played, I just I blew your Padme up pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's dead by turn two or three. Pretty quick. Start turn three, but that's the thing with Qui Gon Ray, the damage it deals now, it's a much quicker deck. I do, I do really want to play it because I've played. Basically, there's been there's three decks essentially that I played at the start of this game, aren't they? They're Vader Raider, Qui Gon Ray. Well, I actually tried Qui Gon Finn first, and then I went on to Qui Gon Ray, and Django Trooper Trooper. So Django Trooper Trooper is kind of like it's a it's a deck that I just I like but I've really fallen out of love with. Vader Raider has always been there, but Qui Gon Ray has been a deck that I really like as well. I really like what it does. I really like one of the reasons why I like Vader Raider is I like damage out of nowhere, damage out of hand, yeah. and, and that's what this deck that's what that deck can do as well because not necessarily out of hand but it can now with synchronicity yeah. but you have the fact that if you've got any shields on Qui-Gon he's got four damage sides on his dice yeah. and so it's just it's, it's not necessarily it's just damage out of hand but it's kind of like damage out of diff- different ways of do- dealing damage that's yeah. the thing I like about that deck and Blue Hero does feel a lot lot more honest and it's got a lot more great um, great tools Guard is mm. absolutely fantastic it makes real use of the yeah. plus two if you haven't got any other melee sides it's a great deck, but I just really think it's going to struggle against dealing with ammo belt because one of the way you can one of the way you can beat the ammo belt second chance is just by have, putting in so much damage into them that, on that turn mm. that you ping off the ammo belt, you then ping, they then heal, you then ping off the second chance, yeah. and then hopefully next round they haven't got them and you can kill them again. But yeah. you don't. I don't really feel like you get to do masses amount of damage with this deck. It's death by a thousand cuts. Uh, let's see. I think that was true in Awakenings, but the SOR version is super quick, super hard hitting. When you can, for instance, like uh, Destiny, you roll out Ray, you roll out Qui Gon, you've got a really bad hand, but you can play a one with the Force for free turn one, and then later on you can then say then you next turn you draw into your Force Speed and Vibro Knife. So then you play your Force Speed, you play your Vibro Knife, you roll out Ray, you roll out Qui Gon. You resolve, you know, then you've got, if you roll the focus side on the one with the force, and that lets you just start flipping everything to two melee, and you can start hitting people for seven, eight, nine damage turn two. So I'm looking at Danny's list here, and I'll put it in the in the show notes, and I, if you watch it on YouTube, I'll have it come up on the screen, so you have to screenshot this to me, but I'll just run for it super quick. So his upgrades here, he's gone for two four speed, just a no-brainer. Two Journals of Ben Kenobi, which is an interesting card, but I understand why it's there because, again, it's this one drop upgrade that you can stick on, Ray, gives you, um, you know, an extra action so you can just roll her out. And then, if you really want to resolve it for the sheet, for the um, for the drawing of the card, you, you can. If not, you just place it on her and then get another action, just yeah. do shenanigans. If you've only got one resource left and you draw into a Vibra Knife, you can switch it out for a Vibra Knife. Well, so, it's your ramp. Yeah, it's just ramp. Two copies of um, Luke's lightsaber, 
interesting. I think I would personally run one Luke's and one staff, if I personally. Just be, I mean, I guess I understand why you'd want two copies because mm. it means you'll draw into it. It's, yeah. it's consistency. But it's a, if you've got one out, then it's, I mean, it's a well, re-roll, but it's a yeah. death card. But again, it's a four damage side die. So you've got two three sides, you've got the the one side from the shields, and you've got the special, which can either be gain a shield, do a damage, or just do till do two two damage. Yeah. Well isn't race style I've got four damage sides? One there's so a one, one, a three no, so one, one, a three, a special and a Yeah, it's just lower damage. Yeah. But it, when you can say play a Luke's you could destiny a Luke's lightsaber onto Qui Gon turn yeah. one. Yeah, so he's got two uh, Makeshi training, which is um, gonna be fantastic with those guards, and also you know it works really well with Qui Gon with his his, his sides. Two one with the force, pretty standard there. Two vibra knife, which is now gonna be the new standard with these things. Yeah. Two it binds all things. So binds all things. I'm not sold on it. No, you haven't. Got, I don't think you've got enough blue upgrades because no. force speed is free. Jedi robes is one, so that does make it now free. Yeah. Well, I guess if you look, if you get get it out, it does mean you, you've got force speed is free. Yeah. Ben, the, the journals is free. Yeah. Your Makeshi training costs one. Your one with the force costs three, and your lightsaber costs two. So yeah, I can see its place there, yeah. but I could maybe see also it cutting out. Yeah. Two um, your eyes can deceive you, which is just a card made for this deck. It's, yeah, so good. Two caution, which is again another really good card for this deck. So you can remove one of your character dice to give another character three shields. So remove race to give Qui Gon three, or vice versa. Yeah. Destiny just is the most outrageous ramp. Yep. Two guard talked about it. Two high ground, another solid card. Two repost, you want repost in this deck. Two swiftness and synchronicity, but no, you've no defensive stance. No, and if I was going to put in the defensive stance, it would either be drop the binds or drop the swiftness. Because I, I thought I put swiftness in it because I'm like, aha, every every upgrade becomes vibro knife, but. But it's not just for upgrades. See, there's a cut. I, I mean, mm. I, I, it's really good. You can use. Um, you can double remove. Or yeah, so you can use swiftness with, with, with other things. So I like the. Yeah, so you could use swiftness, you know, with your, um, with your caution, caution, and also yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, there's, there's, there's so many more cards I'd want to try and squeeze in there as well. Like I really like willpower because it's just. Yeah, I did have willpower. It's heal and it's, it's, da- it's damage through shields. The thing and also this, yeah. my ally is the force. Yeah, and I did when you can okay. force throw and then force throw again. It's it's really good. The thing with this deck as well, though, all the events are basically zero cost. So Return of the Jedi looks really tempting as well because that means you can then start pull back synchronicity or reposts or cautions or. You know, it allows you to get back those kind of quick damage from hand cards to do more damage. Yeah, if you've got loads of cheap events, then maybe it's it's worth probably dropping it binds all things, just to like because I mean you're spending if you're spending your money on on the upgrades, upgrades and then you've just got all these nice cheap events. Yeah, yeah, I think I think it binds all things. It hasn't really done wonders for me so far, so probably it's the next card to get dropped for more events. It's one of those cards where you need to see it early because if you see it later, then it does yeah. nothing for you. Yeah. And the fact that it's only running twelve upgrades and two of the upgrades are really cheap, and one of the upgrades is grey, so it's only hitting three upgrades really. It's yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm not sold on it. I think I will probably drop it. It's it's work, but it's a it's a it's an idea. Yeah. So we had a request from someone who wanted um, to talk about a nines deck. So just let let up nines, Danny. And oh yeah, uh, let's. We... I have got my nines deck as well. So all I do at work is just sit on <laughs> SW Destiny DB and just make decks and hope that your work never listen to this podcast. I'd hope my work <laughs> never listen to this podcast. So I've got two nines decks because I've been playing a nines deck as well deck as well sorry mm. and that was e Django e9 so that was just because I prefer it together and that's yeah. just a lot of a lot of upgrades a lot of weapons and then and Steve if you're going to play nines you have to play a buttload of weapons mm. to make up to you know really make use of his ability and I really like the nines with IG 88 which you've called IG 99 <laughs> <laughs> see what I did there cool oh, it's like an upgraded IG so it does make sense because obviously IG special allows him to get yellow upgrades back from the discard pile uh, for two less, it's got a lot of a lot of potential. Ar- Armor plating is one of those cards. When I first looked at, I kind of um, disregarded at first, but, mm, but then the more I've kind of like thought about it, I think it's a really good card because you it's, it's a may. Like when I first looked at it, I thought it was just like it had to happen. Right. But you get to choose when you discard the upgrade. So early game, you can just take those damage and then have it on him, and then it's, it's when it's, when things are starting to look a bit iffy, that's when you can start. Well. Getting rid of your, your, your the, the best thing about armor plating is that it's yellow, so you can play it early, discard it early, roll the special, put it back yeah. on them for free. 
can can you get can you get armors upgrade? Oh, again, it's upgrades. Upgrade, it's up, upgrades. It's or weapons equipment. or equipment. Yeah, yeah, and it is. Da -da -da, it's an equipment. So yes, yeah, so you can just yeah, yeah. yeah. It's great. It's like it rolls special on IG88 and basically get a field we, medic. Yeah, and considering he's got his shield size as well, it's going to make him tankier than Vader. Yeah, I hate his two for one though. <laughs> his two for one is the worst side. Yeah, it's a little bit upsetting. I mean, I'd, even if, I'd much prefer. For me, it's like having a second blank. For me, it really is like having a second blank, having two shields for one. But then again, but then saying that, how many we, we play dug in for one, and we have to have the battlefield. This yeah. is like not as good as well. The problem is, it's not as good as dug in. Yeah. You don't need to have the battlefield. Sorry, so con not as good as dug in. Pro don't need to have the battlefield. Con use a dice. Yeah. So use a character die. Is a character die. And his, the rest can't of his die is can't good. think of any more pros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that IG doesn't have any money side, this deck could struggle quite a lot from lack of funds. Only Nines has a, um, a resource side, doesn't yeah. it? So I mean, I find that though, with, with Nines, it's you don't really mind not having many resources because you just end up overlaying weapons upon weapons upon weapons a lot of the time. I mean, yeah, it would be better to hard play them and have, you know, three guns all blazing. But, mm. I mean, if you throw down, you know, like a jetpack early or something like that, I mean, you're not going to really want to resolve that unless you get the three shields. But then you overlay it, throw it into the discards so then IG can steal it for free. Yeah. And you're not paying any money for these great weapons. There's certain weapons that you never overlay, I think. Like, so are things like the um, riot baton. Once that yeah. goes on it, yeah. that stays on. That's it. what you sort of run towards. I think, yeah. yeah. So like, so you, so baton. when you put your D817 blaster on, you roll it out. You hope you get one of the one of the two sides <laughs> that you can resolve. Yeah. Uh, and you just resolve it. You just take it. Just take take a one or take a shield, and then. You know, if you've got, if you don't happen to have any more in your hand, then just roll them out with it. But if not, you just replace it and you go up to the next one. Yeah. So yeah, they're, they're ones and things like um, flamethrower. I think there's another one that you just get on him. Hope you hit the four. If you don't hit the four, I'll see you later, flamethrower. Uh, then that can ramp. That that's the one that get into your you, your baton for free. And then yeah, I, 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 but then I wouldn't mind having a flamethrower on IG88 for one. <laughs> Yeah, Vibra Knuckles is an interesting one because it works really well with with FN, but I think you will really struggle to um, have the resources around to up those ones to twos and that two to a three. That's true. Yes. And that's like super late game, isn't it? Once like RNG's got some redeploy weapons from FN, because I feel everyone's going to kill FN first in this deck, um, so it allows a IG to maybe you know after when you get some redeploy stuff. It will make them better, but do you really want loads of melee weapons on IG? Do you want to replace them? Well, I see you've like... got one copy of Sabotage in here. I'm not putting any arms deal, so you'd be like, when when, when um, FN finally dies, if he's the first person, you can be like, right, I'm going to arms deal away all these weapons and then get myself a load of money so I can play things. Yeah, I've also not put things like Rocket Launcher in this deck as well, which again would be really good, but then it's also money starved as well. What does so... Traitor do again? Traitor is a... One ambush, cost. discard the top card from your deck, then remove a die that's not showing a special that has an equal value or less than the card you discarded. Oh, okay, so you've got a lot of weapons and stuff, so you can easily yeah, get so, so you just discard a big weapon to remove a big die. Yeah. Um, because that's kind of the thing, after he Electroshock, he doesn't like you in Traitor. Well, after those two, it's like, well, what have I got? So you've also got Doubt in there as well. Which yeah. is the yeah for force opponent to resolve one of their die. Yeah, I'm surprised you've got no, you haven't got any quarter portions in there. Yeah, again, it's giving your opponent it's giving them money, money but, but but you don't really care, do yeah. you? That's true. Because well, don't but don't you have to give them a money? No, no, no. They just get a money. Ah, uh, they just get a money. Okay. I, I believe it is just remove one of your opponent's die. They yeah. gain a resource. Yeah, I have to say, like, th this deck I haven't gone over too much since yeah. that initial build, and there's definitely a few tweaks you can make, but yeah, it's definitely loads of, mm. you know, six removal cards. Yeah, so I don't know, so you, you, haven't, you haven't got um, the grapple gun. but I'm not. But I'm I would just put it in it. just because it's a yellow gun that you can get an IG for free that's got two range yeah. sides on it. Yeah. I quite like the Ascension gun, but I mean, I think it really depends on what battlefield you're not playing, mm. in a way. Like, if it's. Like um, like if you just take Mustafar, 
and then it gives your yeah, grapple gun yeah, another yeah. damage side. If, as long as you don't ever get it chosen, yeah, they, you're happy. No one's gonna pick. No one ever though. picks Mustafar. Yeah, that's yeah. it. I that's mean, it, you. Yeah. I mean, Danny's gone for Moisture Farm here, which is. Um, I, I like Moisture Farm as a, as a battlefield. It's just you know just gain a resource. Resources are really tight, but it's one of those. Re, it's one of those ones that if unless you can claim early, it's really mm. going to hurt you because you are going to give your opponent lots of money. I mean, I just now said. Um, moments ago oh give an opponent of money it doesn't really matter we're yeah. playing quarter portion but it can definitely um, it can bite you in the butt but I guess it's quarter portion I guess is one of those cards that's a bit like loft cat mouse as well mm-hmm. and he doesn't like you where it is you have to hurt yourself slightly to hurt your to, to hurt your opponent to benefit you yeah. so like he doesn't like you've got to remove one of my dice but then you have the luxury of removing one of your blanks yeah and then Loft Cat Mouse, it's the other way around, isn't it? So, yeah. so, so they get to pick which of your dice gets removed yeah. and you pick one of theirs. Yeah, so if you've got rubbish, you can get rid of one of those good ones. Yeah. But yes, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it, it kind of depends on, on how much you value giving your opponent one resource. Um, but then when you get into the late game, and when you just are like, well, I had they had seven resources. Well, I think I stopped picking up the resources when we were playing yeah. because it was like, I'm yeah. not playing any cards yeah. because I'm, I'm not going to play any cards because you're going to mill me, so I don't care how many resources I've got. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a double-edged sword in that regard. Yeah. With, but, but, but then doubt was pretty solid because you just go, oh, that roll. plus three. Mm-hmm. Well, it's going to re-roll it and oh, it's forced yeah. to remove or play it. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Because I remember, actually, I remember, I actually remember playing against someone, and they kept doubting me, and I kept getting into a better result no, than what I had. I, like, I mean, what doubt does let you do is obviously in the dream where they've got loads of plus sides and that one black side. You make them re-roll it, even if it's another black side, they have to resolve just that one die. Mm-hmm. So it still removes all that extra, yeah. that additional damage away from them as well. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. So I feel doubt is a really good villain card, and I think I, we'll find a lot of spots in a lot of decks. I think. I think maybe Swiftness would be a good event in there as well because when you put a Vibro Knife or a Holdout Blaster on FN, mm. you're loving life. Like, yeah. um, speaking from experience, when you throw a Vibro Knife on him or whatever, not only do you get to roll and resolve, but you then get to activate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It just makes it that much better. So, I mean, I'd, again, I've not played extensively with my FN Django deck that I've been sort of messing around with, but yeah, I didn't feel too starved for resources to throw a couple of them in, so I don't mm. know. But again, I need to play it, play it more. I think things like FN as well, you want to be putting upgrades on that haven't got many modifiers on them, mm. because yeah, if you roll it out and you roll a modifier, I mean, it's it's just you can't do nothing with it unless you're then you roll him out and you don't get the double the double, you know, resolve of the dice. If you rolled out, you know, a, a knuckle a, a viable knuckle has hit the two, spend another resource to turn it into yeah. three damage, so then you get to roll him out with it again so it's really mm. good so jetpack is obviously like it's a it's discard to re-roll I guess isn't yeah, it? it's a, yeah. It's a, the other side it has is just what money and a special yeah. and a shield yeah, shields, yeah. shields so shields disrupt so yeah when you roll out the jetpack you just open I mean there's really those sides are alright but there's there's essentially got three blanks on it hasn't yeah. it yeah I mean I, I would probably just use that as discard fodder but it's only a two. It's only a two cost upgrade. And then so IG so you can, gets it back for free. But then yeah. yeah, but yeah, IG loves it. IG really enjoys having a jetpack because he has he has black sides of the synergies in that regard. Yeah. But it's just you just got to just take what you can when you when you with FN. It's just um, yeah. roll them. Basically, you roll them out. Hope you hit a side that can resolve and just resolve it. Even yeah. if it's a money. Yeah. Even if it's a shield, just take so, it because you roll them back. Then roll them back out with yeah. the upgrade on. That's yeah. it. I mean, not deck building related, but just going back to the other night when we were at the when we were at Athena, mm. uh, you loved it, didn't you? You were you were already smiling. Uh, I got a flamethrower out. Um, I think oh, I'd already rolled in an ascension gun, which I'd throw it, which I rolled out, and I got a um, a focus. So that was useless. That stayed in the pool, and I ignored it. And, two and Daddy ignored it for two turns. He focus. Couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't, <laughs> yeah, he could. He couldn't. He can't complain. But anyway, I um, I think what did I do? I, you just rolled him out. I basically. just rolled him out, yeah, and I got two melee sides on him for a bug, so on both his character dice, yeah. and a blank on Flamefur, which landed perfectly in between them, and I just went, oh, look at that focus, and switched that to four for a bug. I had three resources. <laughs> so eight a, damage yeah. staring me in the face, and I just looked at my hand and had no removal, and I was like, <laughs> oh, well... It's yes, fun. <laughs> yeah. No, I had an electroshock. So I electroshocked one of the twos, but then I still got hit for six. It was yeah, yeah. should have just hit the focus. Yeah, but see, I've I've tried to get FN and uh, Baby Vader um, working. Yeah, as because um, I knew find in that deck, they people tend to go for the Vader first, which gives you more chance to get more out of your FN, and also you get to play Elite FN there. Yeah, uh, and again with the blue, you're going to have more melee dice. 
So yeah. you're going to have light, the lightsabers. Lightsabers. Pikes. Um, the lightsaber pike you can stick on them but again the lightsaber pike it's got two plus sides on it yeah. so it's another one which is hard to get off but then fair, if I put a lightsaber pike on FN and I rolled the four for one yeah. I would just be like yeah that can stay so, there yeah. just, yeah. just wait for one of these other ones to hit a black melee dice and I'm going to hit you for a lot of damage Yeah. I mean I feel like the, the best FN deck is going to be elite uncut single FN single stormtrooper because Uncar just sits there and makes you loads of money. They're going to gun for FN first, and he's going to die. So you just got to try and maximise your damage with FN as much as possible. Um, but meanwhile, Uncar is pulling cards, making you loads of money, which you can later keep reviving your Stormtrooper. But or you just play Crime Lord and Uncar, and just and then just Crime Lord the second character. Because you know if you hit, you know three four cost upgrades, which you know mind probes one with the forces. The new light bow, I feel, is going to get a lot of pro- a lot of play. Um, you're just going to be swimming in money. In, in all the games I've played, Uncar, I've like started just massing like ten plus resources. I do think Uncar, though, like it doesn't matter who Uncar's with. I always kill him first. He's ten health, and I hate and he's and, he, and that's because he makes you so much money. Mm. Like I, I, I think he would be the target you'd go for first. Yeah, you'd give him the shields and. Kind of the big thing, which I, I think the Knights of Ren talked about uh, probably about a month ago or so, is that Jetpack is such a good card on Onkar because it's got a plus two side, a plus three side, but it's also got plus two shields, which you'll resolve every time to give them more shields. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, because you've got to remove um, a three, value of three, three, haven't you? So you can just remove your plus three Jetpack side to then do that, and you can just keep doing that as well. So even if you Onkar dies turn two, but if you pull off his ability two, three times and managed to get ten resources off it. And then you've got an uncle then you've got a, a full health FN and a stormtrooper which you can just start loading up with guns. Hmm. That's one really healthy thing about this new set now is like before and definitely in an Awakenings world, it's so damage focused. It's just damage decks. So if you're not playing a damage deck, just don't bother playing the game. And in this set there's definitely a lot more focus on characters that aren't just they are support but they really yeah. do pull their weight i remember when i first saw uncle because i was so much in that damage brain yeah like, i was just like this guy's rubbish he doesn't do any damage he doesn't kill anything yeah i've got a crime lord anyone going to kill anything but then you just obviously look at his cost and look yeah. at what, what health pool health pool and what cards yellow villain gives you which is i still say yellow villain well in a world where hammer belt second chance doesn't work yellow villain's the best and most powerful yeah. color other than that, then it's just because yellow heroes. So yellow yeah. is still the strongest. Um, Uncar also lets you play Imperial Imperial Inspection. Oh yeah, the, those cards are just so nuts. good. Oh, it's, it's just totally nuts. There's nothing more uh, more annoying when just they've got Imperial Inspection out, and every turn you put down these upgrades, and they go back to your hand, and you have to mm. you lose so much tempo when yeah. a holdout. Even when a holdout goes back to yeah. your hand, you, even though you got the ambush, you lose so much tempo having to get it back out again. I mean, and the resource it, cost. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not ideal. But even removing a four speed or a fast ants yeah. is annoying and is ruins the opponent's tempo. Obviously, if they've got a two cost upgrade, you're probably going to go for that. Yeah. And unless the four speeds out and it's shown special, you're probably not going to remove that. But even then, that is annoying and that is taking an extra turn for them to get stuff out so you can go into your battlefield. Well, that's yeah. the thing. It's good going for the fast hands because even though it's not a dice side, you know your opponent's going to waste an action on the yeah. next turn or at least in this round still putting it back on. Because they want it on that yes, character yeah. for their speed, and so you really are slow bringing them back down to your level by bouncing it back off. So, like I say, it hasn't yeah. got a dice. It is it's still a really good tempo play for your side. Yeah, and then also it probably needs to put salvage yard in there, which is whenever you roll a resource side, you force your opponent to lose a resource. Oh, salvage stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. The one again. We keep saying this all the time. FFG in this game. If a card has a character's face on, yeah. then it goes in the deck if you're playing that character. Yes. Um, but I think that pretty much wraps up FN. Like you play him with a lot of upgrades, and there are a couple of suites that you can play him in. I saw um, just playing Elite FN and Elite Uncar Plot as well, which yeah. uh, won a tournament. See, I, I like him in the Vader version because again, you can bang holocrons on him, mm. so you can stick a holocron on him, and you can then get some force powers out on him as well. Yeah. Uh, so in that version, your opponent is definitely going to go after the Vader first because it's big damage on his. He's got a lot yeah. of damage sides. It's Darth Vader. Yeah. You know, he hates sand, it gets everywhere, 
and <laughs> yeah. so people tend to go after him first, um, so you, you can get more more out of it. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to. I've only really got one IGAA. I pulled four copies of FN in my two booster boxes. Nice. So, <laughs> well, actually, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I picked. I pulled three. I had one previously that I from had pre-release. from pre-release, um, and so I pulled three from two booster boxes. But I do. I think the first version I'm going to try. Is well, the first version that I can try is with Vader because I've got Elite Vader. But the version I want to try first is with IG88 because yes. I really like armor plating and I like their I like their little synergies. And yeah. I think an IG88 is, a, is an absolute badass. And I pulled three IG88s in my two boxes, so I can play that deck right now. <laughs> Although I couldn't because I haven't got any stun batons, and I feel like such a good card. Oh, you the right baton! Have to have the the right baton. To... Yeah, I got two coming in the post. <laughs> yeah, I need to get on that. <laughs> That's FN. That is FN. Okay, guys, that just about wraps up this episode. But before we go, I'd just like to swing you towards our Patreon because before, you know, we, we do this show for the love and it was costing us nothing. But now this show costs us money <laughs> because we have fulfilled our SoundCloud free usage and we've had to sign up to keep this show going. Uh, although it's not a lot of money, you know, it's, it's still nice if any of you guys want to help us out and swing us a buck every month we need nine of you nine of you need to sign up or we can break even we can do this yeah keep the three man matter alive I mean it'll stay alive anyway but any contribution no, 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 no. I, I will I will quit unless you sign up so we've already had to pay for James to come to the um, European <laughs> Game Expo because he's a poor student he is a poor student <laughs> do it for the students yeah but even if you know, even if you don't give us any money, just listening to the show is already fantastic. You know, I really want to thank from the bottom of my heart everyone who has taken the time to listen to us waffle on because I know we're not the most professional outfit out there. I mean, this episode already to me feels like the worst one we've ever done because I'm really tired and I'm not even sure the vocal levels are going to be right. It's going to be great. <laughs> but thanks for sticking with us. But if you do want to help out the show. Let's go down the Patreon. We are actually having a special card made for us. We've got a, a pad one being drawn up. Now, um, if you guys watched The Smuggler's Den, you may have seen that I was on there or heard that I was on there and I talked about the pad one. But just in case you hadn't, I'll talk about it again. Essentially, there's a singles website that in a, an English-based singles website. And they you can buy the card and the dice separately. And I was just perusing through there the other week and I noticed they had quite a lot of the pad one dice versus... Um, the pad one card they're a lot extra so I picked up five of them and there's a local artist in the Norwich area that I've, we've commissioned to draw us a custom up pad one so we will have five pad ones with five dice going available and obviously we're going to print out loads of the cards as well so when we go to tournaments we can kind of hand them out so if you do uh, if you do want to maybe give us a little pound there'll be a little pad one with a dice <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll have that maybe the first five people that subscribe via Patreon and then get their pad one, and then instantly cancel their subscription. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I would do it. <laughs> yeah, you'll find that they're all actually just to me. James yeah. Adams all says green. Yeah. <laughs> oh, why are we posting this? Hang on, James, are you funding the three man? Okay. Yeah. So we pay for him, we pay for him to come to tournaments, but he funds us to, to host yeah. us up on SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good bet. Um, I've also put on there some extra tiers of stuff, which will be coming soon. So things like three man meta t-shirts and three man meta uh, mats. Oh, play mats. play mats. I didn't even know these things. I, when we talked about t-shirts, but I thought they were just for us to be little like... Oh yeah, they're, they're, little, well, we'll have cool ones, but I feel like... Maybe they should be made to order, just in case. Yeah, I don't, oh, think, yeah. I don't think we should go out there and get like a hundred t-shirts <laughs> no, screened. Nor do I. And then like, no one ever wants them and sitting in all these t-shirts. <laughs> no. But yeah, so... Um, I'd say also a big thanks to swdestiny.com for hosting the show. It's um, really cool that we can be on such a fantastic website, such a community-driven website, and you can uh, check us out on there. And I think that's about it. I haven't got anything else to say. I just want to go home and go to sleep. So I just want to say anything. <laughs> Thank you for listening, and sorry if the sound quality wasn't great this episode. Yeah. Blame Danny. I mean... <laughs> I'll blame you two for not talking into my microphone properly. Well, in two weeks' time, I should hopefully have my internet sorted yeah. out so we can go back to sitting in our little dark rooms and interrupting <laughs> each other because we haven't got any vocal cues at when someone's going to speak. But at least the quality will be there. Yeah. Um, and else, you know, we'll talk about any up-and-coming tournaments that we might be going to. And again, if you guys have got any questions about any characters or 
uh, any particular cards that you want us to talk about and see our opinions of, then don't hesitate to send us a message. You can message us on Facebook. We actually do have an email as well, which is 3 mailmeta at gmail.com. You can send us an email. We do have the Twitter, um, just, just forward slash 3 mailmeta on Twitter, so you can um, tweet us something and we'll try and get back to you. Uh, hashtag 3 mailmeta as well, so you can see how much I don't use, yeah. don't use Twitter. Um, we've also got a Discord, which I'm in. At the moment, and we've had a couple of people asking about the league in there, so I've been ah. sending them across all the details. So fantastic, yeah, it's cool. So we're, we're we're available in many outlets, and yeah, once I get my internet up and running and have myself a nice designated computer zone, which I will have, I'll probably get on the uh, on the Twitch a bit more as well, mm. and doing a bit more streaming. So yeah, thanks very much, guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.